Welcome to another edition of the Color Pigeons and More TV show. The show that covers all aspects of the pigeon hobby, whether it be racing, performing rollers, flying tipplers, fancy show pigeon, and more. Interviews with well-known pigeon breeders, breed profiles, loft construction and management, pigeon health and treatment, show coverage, genetics, just to name a few. Watch, learn, and enjoy. And now let's go to our host, Danny Joe Humphrey, and see what this show is going to be about. Hello, I'm Danny Joe Humphrey. Today we're on the 20th show of the Color Pigeons and More TV show. The, t the Pigeon TV show that covers all aspects of the hobby. We welcome any type of information on pigeons and we want to share it with y'all. This is done for your enjoyment and maybe you can learn a little something. First thing I want to do is I want to apologize to you for being late on this month's show. Unfortunately, I guess I'm not immune to the flu either. But uh, about the first 10 days of the month, I was absolutely worthless. I hadn't got over it yet. And uh, when people tell me they got the flu from now on, I'll have sympathy for it. I'm very lucky. I don't seem to get sick much. And I think it's because I mess with pigeons and stay out all, all the time and exposed to every type of bacteria there is. So maybe that's another plus to pigeons. But anyway, today we got an interesting show for you. We're going to have a segment. We're going to show you how to hand feed. Uh, baby pigeons, a way that I've learned that works real good for me and some of the strategy that goes along with it. And then we're also going to have a section on fixing a broken leg on the pigeon. we got a pigeon, unfortunately, it's got a broke leg. I'm going to show you that. I'm sure you can use that sometime. And then we got some pictures of some pigeons in a loft and some other uh, information that I'm sure you'll enjoy. So we want you to sit back down and enjoy the video. And thanks for watching. Hi, this is Jerry Gagne, Foy's Pigeon Supplies, oldest pigeon supply company in the United States. When Danny Joe approached us about being a part of this great project, we were really excited. If you're looking for pigeon supplies, if you're looking for pigeons, I hope you'll give us a call. Foy's Pigeon Supplies, we're on the internet, just type in Foy's. Or if you'd like to call us, it's 1-877-355-7727. Ask about our 204-page all-color catalog. We'd be glad to send it to you. Color Pigeon Loss featuring 28 breeds of fancy pigeons, high performance Turner Rollers. We have birds available at all times. Capuchins, Saxon Monks, Saxon Priests, Swiss Crescents, Ice Pigeon, Saints, Frillbacks, Archangels, Starling, Figuritas, Old German Owls, Chinese Owls, Satinets, Swallows, Saxon Shields, and much, much more. For breed availability, visit www.colorpigeons.com. For purchasing, pricing, and shipping info, call toll-free 1-800-527-0918. Murin Nagel, better known as Dr. Pigeon by his friends, is known by his one-eye cold treatment. It's called one drop, one time. It only takes one drop, it only takes one time. Every breeder needs at least one bottle of one drop, one time to keep in their loft for those nasty eye colds. They're available at Boys Pet Supply, New England Pigeon Supply, and Pro Flight Supply. And remember, the next time you buy pigeon supplies, be sure to include one bottle of one drop, one time. Okay, what I have here is I got a, a Salesian Swallow, and unfortunately it's got a broke leg. When, uh, I didn't raise this bird, but whoever raised it put the band on it and it went above its ankle. Uh, the, and what happened is that just weakened it and his leg got broke. As you can see here, the leg is broke. And what I'm gonna show you is a way that I found to make a little splint to go on the bird's leg. They actually make some splints that you can buy from Foy's, which is better, but I don't have one. I need to order one, because I need one, but I'm gonna show you what I do. The beauty of a pigeon, or, and obviously all birds, when they have a broken leg or something, it will heal in about seven days. If you can make this thing immobile, for seven days, then it'll heal. And you should be able to say to the bird, and the bird should go and be a, be a protective member of your flock. But anyway, now I'm gonna give you a close up and show you what it looks like, what I'm doing, okay? Okay, the first thing I wanna show you, this is just a little plastic strip tie, wire tie, and I just made a little angle out of it, as you can see here, for the, for the foundation or the splint uh, of the splint. Now I got somebody here that's gonna help me, and what we're gonna do we're going to take this little leg here, 
this one. Get hold of that for me and hold, and hold that in place right there. And then we're going to take some tape in the beginning. And we're going to wrap it around that thing. You don't want to stick to the feathers, but that's not unusual, but it will stick to itself. And that's the most important thing, that it'll stick to itself. And that's what actually what it's made for. Is it? So when you pull it off of somebody's body, it don't take the uh, skin off with it. Okay. Now you see here, we've got that, got that thing right there on that bird, just like that. All right. Now we're going to take the other piece and we're going to go up above it and wrap it. And you don't want to wrap it real tight because good circulation is the key. Okay, now we got a splint here. Now, just to steady this up a little bit, we're going to put a little bit more tape on it. Okay, we've got the first wrapping on there. We're just going to go back up. We're going to go back and ensure this thing up a little bit tighter with some more tape. And like I said, all you have to do is wait. About seven days and you, your bird should be back to normal. If you want to leave it on a little bit longer, you can. Be sure, I mentioned this a while ago, but don't, don't put it on there real tight. Because if you do, you mess up your circulation, which in turn will mess up the healing. So if you do anything wrong, make it too loose. You can always come back. All right, now there it is. That's kind of basic. Let's put that other piece of tape on there, on that front end, or down here. Now we've got this splint on this bird, and what we're going to do now is put this in, the, put this bird in the cage by itself, where nobody will bother. And then, like I say, in, a, in about a week, it'll be healed. Okay, that we showed you how to do that. I hope that helps you. It should. Uh, this is something that happens all the time with our birds. They get their legs broken, uh, so forth. But they do heal quick, so just keep that in mind. You don't have to cull a bird like this. This bird right here, and if I can remember it, I'll show it to you after it's well, and then you'll you'll see what I'm talking about. So I hope that helps you. Well, these are my swallows. Most of these are Silesians. I do have eight. Bohemian tiger swallows and eight fairy swallows. These are very nice birds. I've got them from some really the top breeders. I'm very proud of them. And uh, these will be uh, my breeding stock. Again, I got them all in this loft just so so they can be seen and counted. Here's a little red fairy swallow. It's a little silver fairy swallow. And they're very nice birds, very pretty. We got them in here. Got them on this deep uh, oil dry underneath them. Try to keep the muffs in good shape. Now we'll probably cut these a little bit later. It's what we always do with our muff birds. It, it makes it easier for them to get around and easier for them to breed and to make contact. One of the prettiest breeds of pigeons that I know of is a swallow. They're very, very nice. Very nice. These are my ice pigeon breeders. Try to keep them laying. They still got a lay. I guess that's good. Got some spangles out here, and uh, that bird right there in front, that barless, is, is absolutely gorgeous. Now, you notice my muffs are not that big, and, and the reason for it is this wire. The wire just rubs their feathers off your feet. It's kind of tough. 
Beautiful birds, one of the prettiest birds. I, I, you know, I, I, and I say that all the time, but they are nice. Here's some more of the same right here. Ice pigeons, a brown ice. It's a hen and I raised one baby off of her this past year. I raised more one baby, but only raised one one brown. I'm assuming that it's a that it's a hen. It's supposed to be rare. Beautiful bird. What they have here, this is a collection that I actually purchased. They're really nice ice pigeons. They're all white bars. A couple of Pirellins in here. Like a laced. Clean These are nice. They've had their vaccination. They've been wormed and cankered and all that that we do all our birds when we first get them in. And they're doing pretty good, as you can see. Beautiful birds. Very beautiful birds. Well, these are my breeding monks. There's a few youngsters in here, but mostly you got the breeders in here. And uh, got some more monks too. I'll show you some of them birds I raised this year. Well, these are basically my breeders. Some are beautiful. I got some of those uh, silver white bar, lavender white bar, or ash red white bar, whatever you want to call them. Two spangles, a lot of blues, a lot of silvers. These are bucks that we raised this year. We had a good year with bucks, as you can see. Got all colors. Really been working on our yellows. Trying to get some of those to, where we get enough to sell some if people are interested in it. The monks are a beautiful breed. Really, really nice. pretty good. This is a group of moorheads. Most of these I raised this year. Bought a few, raised a few. Got some reds, some blacks, some yellows, a few blues. These are really nice birds. I, mean, I, I say that about all of them and I, and I really mean it about all of them. All pretty good looking birds. Depends on what you like. That's just some color moorheads, as they're called. These are the few smock breeders that I have right here. And uh, they're still in the breeding pen because uh, every time I tried to get them out, they had babies or they had eggs. I just don't like to break them up like that. Okay, here's. Saxon double crested priest. Still a few breeding pair out there, but this is mostly what I have. I've got a few young birds that are in here, but this is basically my flock. Every year, I've told you this before, we get them and we count them and try to, when we look, after now, we're going to get through with this. We're going to sex them and then we'll know what we've got. And then when breeding season comes along, we know who to do what with. Some of them are really well barked and some of them aren't. But that's the way it is with fancy pigeons. They all are perfect, that's for sure. It'd be nice if they were. That's a double crested Saxon priest. Beautiful bird. 